Hello, everybody. My name is Mark Arlapage. Welcome to this special session of Entree Architect Live here at the Entree Architect community. Member video and audio on Zoom is currently muted. We have people hanging out with us here on Zoom. Uh, we have, we're live streaming on the Facebook group. And so you can catch us either way. If you want to ask questions, I encourage you to come over to the Zoom call. There is a link at the top of our community on the Facebook page. You can still click that. It'll send you through a registration process and then you can jump on the call and you could ask any questions you may have. I'm going to try to also monitor the Facebook uh, group as well. It's not easy to monitor questions on the Facebook group while you're live. So if, uh, if you put at, post a question and we don't get it to, to it now, uh, we'll follow up with an answer later. But if you do want to ask some questions, just pop over to, uh, to Zoom and, and join us over there. We got a bunch of people hanging out on this end as well. Um, if you do have any questions in Zoom, post them in the, the Q&A box. That's the best way that, uh, that we'll find them. Uh, I will monitor the Q&A box. I'll also monitor the chat just in case you post it on chat. I'll do that as well. Um, let's see here. Uh, well, for, for Entree Architect Live, just as an, just a clarification what this session is, this is a special session of Entree Architect Live. Entree Architect Live is an occasional platform where I jump into the Facebook group uh, and, and maybe I'll be alone or I'll join with a guest. Recently, we had a roundtable discussion. As soon as this COVID-19 thing started happening, uh, we put together a, a roundtable. You probably remember that with um, uh, Brian McCartney, Jeff Eccles, Lance uh, Psycho was there, uh, Jane Walton, all those people were there for that call. That is an Entree Architect live call. Today, we have a longtime friend of the Entree Architect community, Bill Janot of RCAT. Uh, Bill Janot is the uh, the web designer. He's the guy who puts all this stuff together. He's the, I, I'm assuming you're also a technical director, sort of runs the, all the technical end of RCAT uh, and everything that you see and run or see and use an RCAT. Bill's the guy behind all that. Is that correct, Bill? That is correct. And uh, and RCAT's been a longtime supporter of our community. We, even long before Entree Architect even existed, RCAT has been a supporter of our community of small firm architects, even before there was an Entree Architect community. But they've also been sponsors for a very long time of our community, specifically as a platform sponsor. Um, and you hear me on the podcast every week talk about RCAT and, and all the different things that it does. Um, but I'm not really sure how many of us really understand how powerful this website is. And this is not an ad. This is just, this was, I uh, reached out to Bill and Casey over at RCAT and I just wanted to have them come to share what they have here because I think it's mutually beneficial to both them and to us for us to understand how this, uh, this platform works. And so I wanted Bill to come and give us a tour of RCAT, uh, sort of show us all the different ways that we can be using it as architects and give the community an opportunity to ask questions uh, that of, of something they see, or maybe even Bill is, Bill is always asking me, what's next? What's the thing that you as architects need? Because they do that. They, they build out these platforms for us to use them. And lots of the things that are happening are, are cat on the website and behind the scenes are things that we've asked for. And they're, they and their team are putting together uh, uh, tools for us to be able to do that. So if you have an idea, you can post that as well, and we'll share that with Bill as well. So uh, whether it's now live or whether it, with it later on when you're watching it um, on the Facebook page, we're also going to post this on a YouTube channel. Uh, and so wherever you see it, if you have an idea, post it, and we'll see that comment, and we'll, we'll get it to Bill if it's not today. So Bill, I'm going to hand it off to you. Uh, maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit more than I did, just so they can give a little context. Um, and then why don't you give us a tour and show us around RCAT. Sounds good. Uh, so I'm Bill Janot, and I've been working at RCAT for about 25 years now. And this will be, what, the first year I miss AIA in 25 years, uh, along right. with the rest of us. Yeah. Um, so RCAT.com is basically a tool for, for any architectural firm uh, that will help them select products and document products uh, for their projects. And over the years, we've added uh, one library after another, uh, filled with content from building product manufacturers, 
that allow you guys to select a, a spiral staircase or an entryway or uh, a new roofing material, whatever it might be, we can help you guys find that, find the information and the documentation that you guys need. And maybe even more so today than any other time, you guys are doing, you know, 16 jobs all at once. You're doing the, the CAD, the, the BIM, the specs, the design, all that stuff. So, so I think RCAT can really help you guys out and save you a bunch of time by gathering the information all in one spot and allowing you to download the files you need quickly and easily. And, and I'll give you a quick overview of the website and, and how to leverage it on your, in your day-to-day -day process. So um, first and foremost, we have search on the website. And you can search by different types of content, uh, or you can just do a search. Oops. For coiling doors, and up will come a list of uh, coiling door products that you can select from. And if you just so happen to need uh, something like this, you click on it. This brings you to the Dynaco profile page where you can see their their coiling doors that they have to offer. Um, if you're not interested in them, you can select a different manufacturer. And if you like that one or that one looks like it'll suit your needs, you can get a better look at the image and all the content that's attached to that particular product, including catalogs, videos, uh, specifications. Oops, show you a prettier view of the spec right there. And you can peruse the spec and, and see if it meets your needs. And you can easily download that spec, edit it, and put it into your master for your project. Um, so you can use the search bar to find what, what you need, or you can just browse the many libraries and applications that we have on the website. Like for instance, if you're looking for a spec and you just so happen to know it's in Division 7, and you just so happen to know damp proofing is roughly right about here, you check that spec out. You scroll down to part two, and you see, yeah, okay, I need a low order coding, perfect. This spec is what I need. You can then download it in Word, or even Word Perfect if you'd like. Uh, again, edit it and put it into your master. Um, so most of our libraries are set up by CSI division. Um, we also set up our, our BIM um, using categories because you know, some BIM guys are used to the CSI uh, divisions and others are not. So we want to make it usable for, for all kinds of users. So we have categories, uh, trending categories, and also the CSI divisions for browsing the BIM content. But personally, I think just looking for Coiling door BIM is the easiest way to find uh, BIM if I'm if I'm a BIM guy, and then you can click through and download whatever version of Revit file that you need, and that'll pop right into Revit, and you can place it on whatever wall you you wish. Um, okay, so we have CAD, we have BIM, we have specs, um, we have many other resources that you can peruse and that are also listed here, uh, one of which is outline specs. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but um, some small firms find outline specs useful. Uh, this is like a typical one uh, of a project that I set up. So down the left hand side of the page is a list of all the uh, sections that we have. And it's quite a bit. It, it's about 250 sections written by Mark Kalin and Associates. Uh, a lot of you guys probably know Mark. He's, uh, he's a fellow at the CSI. So these are high quality sections and they cover basically anything you guys would need. And you can click on each and you can edit them to your delight. And after doing so, you scroll up to the top and you can either select a, a normal outline spec or a short form spec. And by doing this, it will, behind the scenes, it will generate and edit all 250 sections or whatever number of sections you've selected. Uh, zip them all up in a zip file with a title page and 
bid package page, table of contents, a whole bunch of other um, uh, peripheral pages that you may find useful. Uh, all that will be zipped up. Uh, and you can pick and choose whatever files you want to use that are in that zip file. But uh, this should save you guys a whole ton of time cranking out a, a quick outline spec for, for bidding. Bill, can you, can you show me again where to start this process? Because I think a lot of people just peak, you know, peak their interest when you showed the outline specs. Yeah, and I apologize for going quick. Um, I've just That's done okay. That's why I'm here. <laughs> um, okay, so under specs in the top menu, okay, yep. we have short form and outline specs. Got it, okay. And they both lead you right here. Great. Now I'm and then currently. You just, then you just click off the sections you want, and then you click the button, and it'll spit out a, a zip file. Uh, yeah. Now you don't even have to log in to do this, um, but one, once you uh, once you go to generate it, it, you will have to register because it saves all your settings for you, so that you can come back to your projects at a later date and edit them further. Oh, great. Yeah, but it's all free. Everything is free. Yeah, uh, that kind of a key feature. Everything you see on the website is all free. The manufacturers pay for it, uh, which allows us to have the size of libraries that we do have. Yeah, uh, you know, the outline specs alone are valuable for our community. I think a lot of us are using outline specs. You may want some information on your drawings. You can come to the outline spec, copy the information from the outline spec, pop it onto your drawing. You know, it's, it's the information that we're all looking for. And I don't know if anyone's still interested in master format 95, but we still support it. And believe it or not, 15% of our users still use master format 95. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we still have that available if, if need be. And we also have a section of uh, news releases for, um, for manufacturers to post uh, anything relating to COVID-19. Like a lot of these manufacturers are, uh, will state, yeah, we're still open, you know, spec our products, we'll, we'll support you. Um, all, all, all the clients we talk to, uh, it's business as usual. So don't be afraid to spec anybody. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, most, most, uh, most everybody is still, they're still working, they're just working from different places. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the last little feature of the website, I don't know if you can see it over here, but there's a little feedback button. Where is that? It's, just, it's, uh, it's kind of hidden by, it, it's off on the side of every single page. It's a, it's a red button that says feedback. Oh, all the way to the right side of the, of the screen. Yeah. It's and actually under, I'm not sure what that is, but there's a black bar over the top of it. Oh, it's, on, it's on the it. videos. Uh, I'm not going to be able to, <laughs> well, trust me, it's off but on the right see it it's on the right side of the of every screen yeah our little videos are, are covering it up um, but anyway uh, please fill this out um, I'm the person on the other side of this form if if you say hey you know what? we need more specs for overhead doors or uh, you guys don't have any CAD details for dumb waiters just let me know and, and we'll go find a manufacturer to uh, to give us content for you guys uh, or if we're missing BIM for a particular section, we can actually create BIM for you guys and, and post it up on the website. If you, if somebody needed that, let's say they, they searched for the, for something in BIM that they, that they, and they couldn't find it and they posted it in feedback and you could go out and create that for them or find it from a manufacturer. How quick is that turnaround? How, how can they expect that to, to work? Uh, creating BIM, that will take a, uh, quite a while, like a, probably a good couple months just because um, of the volume of BIM that we're creating. Uh, you know, we have 700 manufacturers that want us to create BIM, and so it's a constant churning of, of BIM that we put up on the website. Um, but we, we work these in every now and again. Um, it, it would just take some time, but what will be faster is for me to go, me or one of my crew, to hunt down some BIM that's sitting out on, on the web somewhere and, and, uh, and we can get you a link back to you. Right. Right. Okay. And that would be quick. That would be a quick turn. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Um, what else? Um, that was the quick of the website. Again, the search is probably the best way to find anything on the website um, in a variety of different ways. What about um, spec wizard? How does spec wizard work? Cause you oh. 
we've I've talked about spec wizard on the podcast, you know, in, in the, in the ad spots that we do. And, uh, and I was just wondering how that worked. Um, what spec wizard is, it's, it's an interface that sits on top of a, of a spec. So let's look at a spec here. So this is a typical manufacturer spec that we have up on the website. It's 20, 30 pages of, of, uh, content. Um, Throughout it are notes to specifiers, which will help you to customize this spec for your application. What Spec Wizard does is it condenses this entire spec and those instructions down into a simple UI, like so. And what you can do is you can go into this UI, make selections. UI is user interface. Oh yeah, okay. sorry. Talking web web talk to us. Yeah, that's my the geek <laughs> in me coming out. Uh, so you can select whatever attributes uh, you'd like for for your application. After you do all the selection, you click on a little generate word button at the top, and behind the scenes it creates the spec. It saves it, and then you open it up in Word, and there's the the thirty page spec whittled down to ten or fifteen pages. Yeah, that's that's powerful tool tool as well for us, you know, for small firms because we don't, we don't always need the giant spec book, but very often we're looking for a small spec book, like just a small section that sort of gives us the information we need, or again, some information that we want to just copy over to our drawings. Um, that's a great tool for that. Yeah, and the beauty of this is um, it's um, uh, Mark Kalen and the best spec writers in the country are creating the specifications behind this interface. And um, all that is in conjunction with the manufacturer. So the content you're getting in the spec and the spec that's generated from the wizard is 100% is accurate. And it's something that when you create that spec, that product actually exists. It, it's not like you, you create this generic spec that the contractor may or may not be able to fulfill. No, you'll definitely be able to fulfill this product that you spec here. Right. And that's one of the, it's another benefit of using RCAT is that it's constantly updated, right? It's what you find on there are, you know, the old books, the old green books that used to sit on the, on the shelf of every architecture studio. That's great for about a year. And then everything in there is obsolete or some of it's obsolete, right? Some of it's outdated. Some of it's no longer available. The benefit of using RCAT is that it's always available. Whatever's on the site is, is real-time active content. So a little side note uh, about those green books for, for us older people in the crowd who remember the green books. Um, I have a history with those. Um, the, the founder of RCAT, my, my, my dad, Rick Janat, he, he worked and managed and ran suites back in the 80s. So when, when you saw the green books and they were 15 volumes wide. Yeah, you know, I remember that. Six feet wide worth of green books. Yes. Uh, he was the person responsible for, for putting those out. Wow. And he took his expertise there and started RCAT. Yeah, and I remember, I remember when RCAT first started and it was just this little thin red book that sat next to the green ones. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And, and it just kept growing and growing and growing. And you guys sort of saw the future, right. And, and took, a, took things online. Um, I, I interviewed Bill not too well, actually it was a long time ago. He is on, it was on the podcast. And so he shared the entire story of our cat. Um, and so I'll, I'll post a link in the Facebook group later on today. If anybody's interested in listening to that whole origin story of how our cat uh, came about. It's very interesting. Yeah, and, and this is the, the big red book that we used to have. Um, it, we just now have a digital version that's 300 pages big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just makes sense to have it all online now. Oh, totally. And it's, it's nice and interactive and, oops. <laughs> Same technology drives all the other catalogs that we have on the website. Super easy to use. And again, all up to date. So you're not, you know, you're not looking at a, a catalog that's five years old. Yeah. Half of it's not, not accurate anymore. Yeah, we, all we do all day long is update content on the website. Then what about um, the other thing that we talk about on the podcast when we share information about RCAT is uh, Charette. 
from RCAT. Can you walk us through Charette and how that works? Sure. So um, this is Charette. What will come up? <laughs> okay. Um, I'll just take you through this. So these yeah. are all my projects that I have in, in my personal Charette. Um, and you can click on a project and it, it's, it, it's a collaboration tool that will allow you and your teammates, these are the two teammates that I have on my little team, but you can have you know, 20 people on your team if you'd like. You just add their email addresses right here. They get invited uh, to this project and they can post new ideas. They can generate tasks. Uh, actually, I'll just do it. So it's real simple, some job, blah, blah, blah. And that creates that job. And I, may, I can also assign a team member to that job, like so. And that team member can work on that particular task. So move it to that column. And then she'll, it's in progress right now, and she finishes the job and she moves it to done. Uh, there's similar applications out on the web like uh, Trello that yeah, yeah. operate similar to this. Um, but we've, we've focused this around RCAT and, and the way that you guys work and the ability to um, attach products to a project. Um, you can have links to CAD files and, and BIM files or specs uh, in this particular project if you want. Uh, you can also move these columns around if you want. You can also get rid of them, uh, like so. You can also create new ones, like so. Yeah, there we go. Or yet another column like that. Whoops. That's being finicky. Come on. Well, anyway, there we go. Okay, a little lag. <laughs> I think my internet's slow. Yeah. It's, anyway, yeah. Uh, you can create as many columns as you want um, and organize them any way you want. Um, in addition to that, we also have outline specs hooked up to your project as well, which is basically identical to what I was showing you before. Yeah. And yeah. anything that's available on RCAT can be very easily linked to Charette. Right, so when you're using Charette, yep. if you find building information or CAD detail or BIM BIM uh, model, um, it's all there, and you could you could share that on Charette, and then you could also share information, web links or other photographs as well. You could upload photographs of your own. You can share PDFs, and and uh, maybe if you have drawings, you want to share there. It's it's basically a collaboration tool, much like Trello. Um, but it's built for us and, and specifically focused on, you know, the, the content that Charette uh, and, and our cat uh, has for us. Yeah. And this is, this is an example of a photo that Mark was just mentioning. Um, but uh, one thing I didn't show you is how to get here. Uh, you can either type in charette.rcat.com or uh, was right here. Hmm. It should be right here. Well, it will be. <laughs> Funny. Uh, but for now, you can just type in charette.rcat.com. Okay. All right. And and then if you do a search, will you find it as well? You should. That's a good question. And if it doesn't work, it will. It will by the end of the day. Minutes after I hang <laughs> up. Now, that'll work, though. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll it's easy. It's, it'll be easy to find. Yes. Uh, Charette.rcat.com. Correct. As well. And I think right now, if entrearchitect.com slash uh, rcat, I think also still goes to Charette as well. And so mm. I have to, uh, I'm not positive or not, but that's a link that we created a while ago. Okay. Um, if uh, So anybody who's on Facebook Live right now, if anybody wants to uh, ask a question, it's hard to... Uh, monitor the questions on the Facebook uh, page. We, we can try. So if you post any comments there, we can answer them. Uh, or you can 
click the link to register for this call and, and quickly hop into the Zoom call. We do have some questions uh, in, the Zoom, in the Zoom call. So Bill, I'm gonna ask a few questions that people posted here. John asked, can you find something like a four horizontal panel interior door? Can you get that specific in terms of if I'm looking for a four panel interior door, uh, will, that, will that help us be able to find something that specific? Uh, I hope so. Well, technically that's a four panel door, but it's not what this person's talking about. So it's, so the search is looking for all those words and giving you results. And so some of these probably will be interior doors that you can, you can find the, the four panel. It's not, the four panel is not going to pop right up. Yeah, I, I know, I know what you mean, but yeah, yeah. like here I'm finding um, a door that has four panels in it, but that's, that's yeah, maybe if if it was a more specific for yeah. raised panel in wood interior door, maybe that, maybe door. that. Yeah, it's still all, most, a lot a lot of garage doors. Now that one didn't work. But you could definitely find interior doors, John, and then you know look through the catalogs for the ones that you're looking for. But I know what you're asking for, and I think Bill understands this well. You, you, it doesn't look like you can type in something that specific and get the result exactly what you're looking for. You're still going to have to look through the, the results. Uh, the other thing is we may not, I can't believe we don't have like an interior wood door, manuf interior right. wood door manufacturer that would satisfy that. I'm sure Simpsons, Simpsons on it, I'm sure. Yeah, see, I'm not seeing anybody. Acoustical surfaces. Maybe trim light. Masonite, I saw Masonite there. That's kind of... See, well, this is a bifold door. Again, not really what the person's looking for. Yeah. I'm sure I have an example that would satisfy what you're talking about, but in, unless they mention unless they mention four panel interior, it won't come up in the search. Right, right. So you have to be as specific as you possibly can if you're looking for something specific like that. Yeah. Let me try one more thing. Four panel interior door. Okay, swinging and missing. Coming <laughs> doors. If you did uh, interior wood doors, what what comes up when it's just uh, interior wood doors? That's not even wood. Resistant wood doors. John saying add residential doors. Resident residential interior wood doors. Good call, John. I don't think it's gonna help us. We we should have seen something by now. Weather Shield might have it. It's this series, I think, encompasses a whole bunch of products. Hinge doors. How, how does the, um, the who, which manufacturers are added to the site and which ones are not added to the site? How does that work? Uh, we actually have every manufacturer on the website. Like up here, you're seeing the clients that paid to have content up on the website. Got yeah, all right. So the, so then, the paid ones are pushing to the top. So yeah. a, door, a company like Simpson would be there, 
or gelled when it has wood doors. Yep. Yeah, so they're it, there. They're just, to gel. Yeah, Masonite would, would be there. So they so they come up if they're if they're not a paying company company they get pushed down to the bottom. So you, if you're looking for something specific and you don't see it up in the top four or five, scroll to to the bottom and find the companies that you're looking for down below. Yep. Got it. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Um, is is RCAT? John's also asking: Is RCAT more commercial or residential project oriented, or does it not really matter? It doesn't matter. We so everybody's there. It's just any manufacturer. Okay. All right. Great. Um, Richard asks, uh, and I haven't asked, uh, read the question yet, so I'm going to read it live. Uh, we do a lot of public bid jobs, which require a performance spec, which uh, with at least three manufacturers or one basis of design and a quote unquote or approved equal. Uh, we have been using master spec. Do you, does your outline specs support this or are they manufacturer specific? They are not manufacturer specific. Um, if you look, like here's a, a door section that I, I specified. And these are, the, these are the manufacturers that appear in that section that satisfy the selections that I made for that section. So you are getting or equals. Okay, so when you do it, it automatically is giving you R equals. Yep. Okay. Is, if that doesn't answer the question, uh, Richard, just just uh, pop it in there and, and and follow up on that. Hector asks, uh, I am one of those who underutilize RCAT. I usually download CAD files, and that is usually the end of my involvement. As a residential architect, I place my specs on the drawings. No home builder is going to read a project manual, so my specs need to be brief. To the point, any examples of simplified specs for residential? Uh, well, let's go okay. right back to outline specs again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? Let me show you a section. That'll probably be the easiest way to. Uh, hopefully, I can come up with one off the top of my head. Uh, Ooh, got lucky. Okay, so here's a typical section. Um, I should shrink it up a little so you can see it a little more. So, okay, these are, let's see, steel windows. We have one manufacturer. Now what we do is we list our, the uh, manufacturers that we have on the website inside the outline specs. Now in this particular case, I only have the one but in other sections, you'll get more manufacturers. But this is how simple the section is. It's basically one paragraph. And here you can omit. Right, so then you could edit, edit it the way you want. You pull out the things that are, are not what you're looking for and you'll end up with just a small paragraph. Exactly. And, and again, that's what Outline Specs does, the, the Outline Spec Wizard. It will do all those edits for you. All you have to do is just hit the checkbox for baked enamel, and it'll eliminate these other two for you. Right, and then and then you can once you download it as a Word document, then you can just cut and paste and pop it right into your drawing. Yep. So those those small specs that you're looking for, Hector, you can do that. Just do it as an outline spec, you know, edit as you necessary, and then uh, and then cut and paste. Yeah, I just want to see if I can find one with multiple manufacturers. And of course I can't. Oh, there's one. So here's one with one, two, two manufacturers. It all depends on the section, but uh, what, 7410 maybe? I'm sure that'll have, no, 746. This should have a bunch. Here's one with three. So we do fill them in with manufacturers as much as we can. Right, and then you could also, if, if there are manufacturers in that list that you don't want, you could just delete them. Yep. And then there are spots um, where we don't have any manufacturers and we list a, a section, which is a link back to the website, which 
I'm in the wrong format. Hold on. Which will take you back to a page like this where you can you can find manufacturers to put into that section. Right. And then you just click on specs and or go to yeah. spec wizard, wherever you want to do it. You could do that. You can get download their CAD files, whatever, whatever you need. Right. Okay. If you have any other questions, post them in the Zoom uh, Q and A box. Uh, I am monitoring Facebook, so if any of you who are watching us live on Facebook, or even later in the recording, you can post a comment with a question there. We'll get them to Bill if you if you're watching this later. Um, but post a question if you have any questions. Um, one other question that I had, uh, Bill, which just slipped my mind. <laughs> I had a question specific. Um, I, I wanted to get back to the four panel wood door thing. Yeah, go ahead. Which, which was a bomb. Um, you can also, you, you can do nitty gritty searches like that for whatever reason we came up empty on that very basic one. But for instance, if we wanted a spec that had this standard listed in it. I can do a search for that and I will get sections that list that particular standard, whatever that standard is. So you can get nitty gritty in search. Um, it just so happened that we came up empty on that other one. Yeah, and that'll be fixed by the end of the day, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, maybe if I can find a four panel. Um, <laughs> I, I can't believe we don't have a four panel residential door yeah. client on the website. That's such yeah. a Well, I, I know you do because if you have Simpson and uh, Masonite, they all have four panel doors. So, Yeah, it's just bugging me that we couldn't find that simple one. That's not four panel, but it's a, what if I just get rid of, <laughs> sorry, this is just bugging me. <laughs> Residential. Ah, I give up. I remember what my question was. And it's not a question, it's not a question to you. It was a question to everybody who's watching. Um, is there anything that uh, you didn't see here with RCAT? Uh, that you think RCAT might be able to help you with any tool or because like Charette, we watched, we showed you Charette a little while ago. That's a tool that came directly from people saying, Hey, this is something that we can use. This is something that we're looking for. Um, so if there's any sort of a tool or resource that, that uh, Bill and his team could help prepare for us as architects, whether it's, you know, becomes part of RCAT or becomes some other thing that, that, they can offer to us. They, Bill asks me that question all the time. And so um, if you have any sort of, sort of requests or, or thoughts of, of something that you're looking for as a, as a small firm architect that you can't find, um, you know, post it in the, in the Facebook group or post it, you know, you could ask the question here now live on Zoom um, and we'll follow up as well. All right, Brad asks, uh, is there an RCAT plugin for Revit? and or integration with Revit plugins such as eSpec. Is there an interface that brings RCAT to Revit? Good, uh, question. We, Good question, Brad. We've had a couple of plugins over the years. We had one that, um, uh, that allowed you to search uh, RCAT BIM files and just drag and drop them into Revit. Uh, we had uh, only a smattering of downloads of that utility over the course of two years, and that was a good eight or nine years ago. And then two, two and a half years ago, we had a, a much more extensive plugin that again allows you to search all the RCAP BIM content, as well as um, design wall, floor, ceiling, and roof systems on the fly. And again, we had almost zero usage from it. So we discontinued both. Yeah, because those are things that you have to constantly update and stay on top of. So if people aren't using them, it's not worth the resources. Yeah, it, it, they're huge investments. Uh, and then there's an ongoing cost to, to keeping them running. And if no one's going to use them, then there's no reason to continue the effort. Yeah, yeah. So they were there, Brad, but they're not there anymore. Uh, Hector has a question, a SketchUp. 
has come up with many manufacturer 3D files that are more useful than BIM. Any chance RCAT will have any SketchUp libraries in the future? Yeah, uh, when we started the BIM library a long time ago, um, SketchUp was relatively new um, and, and it's got a huge following now. Um, we, we had to pick one BIM platform to focus on and we picked Revit as the dominant one. And that's, you know, arguably been the case over the years, you know, maybe not so much for small firms, they, they would tend to go more with SketchUp. Um, we don't have, we don't develop content directly for SketchUp, but we do have DWG files listed with, with each one of our BIM objects. And that link right there, you should be able to, to download and use that particular object inside of SketchUp without any issues. But um, try a few and, and get back to me if you have any issues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if it's a 3D DWG drawing, it should, it should work in SketchUp. Yeah. Yeah, and so if you try it and, it and it doesn't work, just reach out in the feedback, say, hey, Bill, you know, I tried it, I was on the call the other day and it didn't work and just so he has some, uh, some feedback on that. All right, any other questions about uh, RCAT or any other suggestions on what RCAT could help uh, develop for us? It's like our own in-house web developer here. So we have, uh, if anybody has any suggestions, they'll start working on it or at least consider it. See, Bill just sent the feedback form for you. To myself. <laughs> All right, Bill, is there anything else that you'd like to, oh, we got a question from Roxana, hold on. Uh, I am based in the UK. I appreciate a lot of this will be relevant to the US market. Do you have any re resources that can be used uh, at feasibility stage that help looking uh, at a first design stage? For example, efficiency of a floor plate GIA against uh, other areas. Uh now, I, I have to preface anything I say as I'm just a computer geek and not an architect. <laughs> so, uh, Mark, you probably understand that question uh, better than I do, but I, I would guess that the technical documents that we have, um, the technical data we have in our specifications would probably be able to help you out there because um, in part two, um, there's quite a bit of technical data that's attached to each part of each one of their products. Um, but if I heard that right, um, you're looking for like comparison data and we don't have anything like that up on the site unless there's another spot and it's the, the catalogs that our manufacturers have may have comparison data listed in them, but that's not guaranteed. Okay, uh, Roxana, if that doesn't answer your question, go to rcat.com and click the little feedback button and, and clarify your question or, or suggest a, a, you know, a solution that you're not finding that they may be able to put together. Because if it's, if it's not something that, that is on their site already or something that they are, are uh, willing to or, or able to develop for us, they may have other resources for us. And Bill would be happy to pop a link back to you and say, hey, go try this. This might help you uh, if, he has, if he has a better uh, idea of what you're looking for. Yeah, our, our spec writers can be a huge help. All right, Roxana said uh, she understands and she'll research the site and then ask the question uh, in case. All right, uh, Hector has another question. Any uh, regional search options? For example, he's in New England, uh, so a West Coast company may not be a worthy search. So if he's looking for uh, regional specific resources, is it able to do that for us? Uh, no, I don't have any regi regional search uh, built in, but uh, Hector, just email me, bill at rcat.com if, you if you're in a pinch and, and I'll, I'll just hack something up for you. Yeah, so he might be able, to, Hector, Bill may be able to help you sort of do that, that um, uh, filtering out. So, you know, this one is, is you know, New England, this one's West Coast. Uh, but it may also be if enough of you are interested in that sort of search, you know, and it's something that, that Bill uh, sees a lot of feedback on saying, hey, it would help us to 
uh, to understand how close, because a lot of people are concerned about how long the materials take, what's the distance that that material is going to take to get to my uh, job site. That matters to me. And if enough, if enough of us to go back to Bill and say, hey, this is important to me, um, I'd like to be able to, to filter out my search based on region, um, he would probably be interested in developing that for us. So if it is something that's important to you, hit the feedback button and let him know. Yeah, about 10 years ago, we tried gathering distributor um, data from, from the manufacturers and, uh, and we failed miserably. Um, we, we got almost no data from the manufacturers, uh, which is, I assume, what you guys are looking for. You want to you wanna, uh, say that this product was coming from a distributor within 50 miles of the job site. You'll get an extra lead point for that. Um, Unfortunately, we weren't able to, to gather that data, but this is 10 years later. Yeah, it may be available. It may actually be required because there are yeah, some regulations that require it now. Yeah, very true. So if so we get enough feedback on that, you know, we can pursue it again and, and see what happens. Yeah, that data is probably there now, and it's just a matter of whether there's a big enough demand to organize that data into a search result. Yep. Yeah, and I don't think that was what Hector was looking for, but that was my interpretation of how that could be useful. That, yep. if, that others who are looking for, for that in terms of sustainability, um, whether it's lead or it's just a, a personal interest that it matters to you, um, you should hit, hit the feedback button on our cat and, uh, and let them know that it is important to us. You know? All right, any other questions? Okay. Um, Bill, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us or? or um... uh, yeah, actually a couple of things I didn't get to was yeah. um, we created a couple of new items recently. One of which is we're now attaching projects to manufacturers profile pages. Um, here's an example of uh, Maxon. We attached three of their projects to their profile page and you can click into the projects get a little information about the project and some photographs. Oh, cool. Um, it basically shows application of their, their product. Um, and very similarly, we have, oh, I got rid of the page like a dummy. Uh, a sec. Very similarly, we have also attached additional photos to each one of their products which again gives you more like application type photos. Right, so that's our cat uh, information on top of the manufacturer information. Uh, yeah. Right, because you're adding photos that are, that are not part of their, you know, their uh, literature. Well, it, it, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But now it's accessible on our cat as well. Right. If, if we had, uh, people in the community, architects in the community that have done projects and they know they've done projects with specific manufacturers that highlights the manufacturer in the photograph. Is that something you'd be interested in? Uh, yes. Uh, so going back to the pro projects page, we also list, um, like in this case, um, the only information we got was the general contractor, uh, but we could also put the architect there and, and their firm who yeah. who designed that particular project yeah so if, if any of you have projects that use specific manufacturers that the photographs are highlighting you know the, the the product you know send them over to our cat and they might be able to post them there and you know you'd, you'd uh, have some some of that credit over there and if you have a stunning photograph of one of your your projects Again, send it my way because uh, we feature uh, a new project on the homepage every day. And, oh, cool. and this comes from users that, uh, that use the website. And this particular firm had a pretty interesting outdoor venue that they created. Yeah, and that's a link back to their website, which helps their SEO. So yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. Cool, so if you guys have some great photos, send them over to our cat. But I think I covered just about everything. Okay, I have one more question, Bill. Shoot. And, and let's see if you're willing to answer it. 
what's in the pipeline? What's, what's the future of RCAT? What are, what are some of the things you guys are working on in the lab that uh, we may be seeing in the future? Um, one thing that I thought would be useful, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong, is currently uh, you can't search across catalogs. Like this is one catalog page for one particular manufacturer. I, I can search for, you know, door catalogs from here. And it would give me a, you know, a broad list of, of catalogs. But what I thought might be useful is to be able to search uh, individual pages inside of catalogs. So what you would get is in the search results, just a whole series of, of catalog pages that satisfy that search from a wide variety of manufacturers. Yeah, I would think that would be interesting to be able to, to dive right into the catalogs rather than just getting a, a, a result of a bunch of catalogs that now I have to go and open each one and sort through and find the product that I'm looking for. If I can search for a specific product for catalog pages and I get a result of specific pages with that product on it, I think that would be very useful. Uh, and another thing, getting back to that four panel door search that we had, um, one, one project we've been chipping away at over the years, but uh, it, it's been a very difficult project to actually make happen, is something akin to an Amazon search. Um, let's see if I can get a search going. That'll... Okay, this, this kind of attribute search where you, you select certain attributes and it narrows down the search results. Right, until right, right. Yeah, that, that for. would be very, very helpful. And that may, right, that may actually help us find that four panel door that we were looking for. Right, so you, you do you interior, or you just do wood doors. Right, and, and you get 50 manufacturers, then you could start clicking to filter out the the ones that matter. Yeah, the, the tricky part is is harvesting that data, uh, which we're still working on, but haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, I'd love to see that in the future. Um, I think that would be great. Um, the the What's interesting are, is is how you guys sort of go and, and do some of these projects. And some of them are, are clearly related to RCAT that will you know make RCAT more powerful. Uh, and then other things like, like the VR systems that you guys had created um, that, you know, may apply someday to RCAT and the way RCAT works. Uh, but it's something that you put together and, and uh, explored. And um, is there, is there any advance, uh, any more development with the VR? Uh, no. Um, again, <laughs> yeah, uh, we didn't get a whole lot of usage from it. We, we did get some uh, enthusiastic and confused users. Because there's a, a VR application called VR Chat, not VR Cat. Right. And, it, and if you're if you know anything about the VR world, uh, VR Chat is incredibly popular. So I I got a few. Um, hey, this app's really cool. It's not VR Chat, but it's cool anyway. Yeah. And then other users that said, Hey, wait a minute, this isn't VR Chat. Boom. Very disappointed. Yes. <laughs> I could understand that, but uh, no, we we didn't get any uh, any any feedback that would uh, uh, prompt us to continue investing in right. this project. Right, and I think you know sometimes things things are, and I used VRCat. I think it was it was a lot of fun. I had actually visited your office, and you let me play with it a little bit, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, and I think things like sometimes you're ahead of your time. Sometimes you are a little ahead, you know, where I think someday VR will be an integrated part of specking uh, materials or, or looking at how materials might be used in a specific application. Uh, and it will become part of the process of, of uh, specifying, spe specifying specific materials. Yeah, I, I still think that it would be fun to design buildings in, in VR. <laughs> yeah, definitely fun, without a doubt. But maybe another right. uh, 50 years on that one. No, I think sooner than that. I think we're going to be seeing that very soon. I think that's happening already. It's, it's just a matter of uh, becoming more wide, widespread.
VR, I think, is going to become an integrated tool in the in development and design of architecture. Um, and at that time, you'll be ready to roll with VR Cat. Yep, that's right. All right. If I uh, last call for any questions, or we're going to wrap things up here. So if you have any questions on Zoom, post them over there. If you have any questions on Facebook, post them there. If you're watching this on YouTube later on, post the questions there. We'll get get your question over to Bill. All right, we're going to wrap things up. Um, you can learn more about RCAT, obviously, at rcat.com. Um, just for technical information, I know I've mentioned this a few times, the session was recorded. So we have the recording will go live in Facebook immediately after we hang up here. And then um, also, uh, we're going to take the recording and post it over to our YouTube channel. And so if you're not a Facebook fan, which I know many of you are not, uh, just go over to the YouTube channel, search Entree Architect, you'll find us. Uh, and in the next couple of days, we'll have the, this recording posted over there. So thank you all for attending and for your active participation with questions. And Bill, thank you. Thank you not only for uh, joining us here today at Entree Architect Live, but thank you for the support of our community for many, many years, like I said, way beyond uh, the lifespan of Entree Architect, but specifically your support of us at Entree Architect. It's, uh, it's very appreciated and thank you very much. Thanks for the kind words. I'll pass them back to my team. All right. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Bill. All right, thanks. Thanks, for sharing. thanks everybody. All right. Bye. All right.